Hi friends. Yesterday we left the story of Esther when Haman had determined to destroy the Jewish people all because Mordecai wouldn't bow to him when he walked past. Mordecai learns of Haman's plot and he urges Esther to intervene on behalf of her people. The problem is that the Persian law says that anyone who enters the king's court without an invitation shall be put to death, and Esther had not been summoned. Now it's in this part of the story that we hear the two most famous quotes from the book. In response to Esther's hesitation, Mordecai says to her, do not think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews for, from another quarter. But you and your father's family will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for just such a time as this. And Esther agrees to take the risk, and she says, If I perish, I perish. The Jews in Susa fasted for three days, and this is the closest we come to prayer in this book. And at the end of the three days, Esther enters the king's court and offers a feast to the king and to Haman. She then invites them to another feast on the next day. So Haman returns home from this first feast, elated that of all the other court officials, he was the only one who was invited. He brags about how rich and powerful he must be to his family and his friends, and yet, despite all of his abundance, he is still angry that Mordecai refuses to bow to him. So his family and his friends give Haman the idea of building a gallows to have Mordecai hanged so that he can go with the king to the banquet in good spirits. <laughs> that same night, the king had insomnia. And so he did what many of us would do. He reached for a boring book. His servant read to him the book of the year's records. And lo and behold, the page that he turned to was the account of Mordecai informing the king of the plot against his life and saving the king's life. The king asked the servant what had been done to honor Mordecai for this service, and he learned that nothing had been done. The king wanted to consult his court on the very best way to honor Mordecai. And the only person in the court at that hour was Haman, who had come to speak to the king about having Mordecai hanged on the gallows. When the king asked Haman, what shall be done for the man whom the king wishes to honor? Haman said to himself, whom would the king wish to honor more than me? And so Haman listed all the ways that he wanted to be publicly honored, puffing up more and more with each idea. He was quickly deflated when the king said to Haman, quickly do so to the Jew Mordecai who sits at the king's gate. Leave out nothing that you have mentioned. You can imagine how angry and humiliated Haman was and it only gets worse for him. Tune in tomorrow for the dramatic conclusion of the story. Thanks for listening today. I'll see you tomorrow.